we are actually in Ohio right now at the Whitetail Heaven North Lodge, right on the border of Kentucky, Aberdeen, Ohio. Yep. Place is beautiful, but we are now cutting up and vacuum sealing the meat from my deer, your deer, and a doe another fella killed. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, and some of another buck. Mm -hmm. There's probably 250 pounds in there. It's a lot of meat. Yeah, we got a lot. I ended up killing a 161 and 1 8 inch 11 point. <laughs> named Spanky. I named him Spanky because I saw him the first day and he didn't come in close enough for me to get a shot with my bow. And when he was leaving, I noticed he had a chewed off tail. So I named him Spanky because of that and because he spanked my tail that first day. You killed a big deer too. But four days later, I killed him at the same stand. Hallelujah. That's gonna be on Bone Collector. Killed him with my Elite Cure. Broadheads were NAP Hellraisers. That's the first deer I've killed with a Hellraiser. All my other ones have been with Thunderheads. And then the man, the myth, the legend over here killed on day two. His was a 145 inch eight point, which is dang big for an eight point. Velvet deer too. Yeah, they were both in full velvet. Yep. So now we are processing we're the meat from them. We're trimming the fat and uh, the yep. One of the things like a grind, yeah. And I've got a super dull knife here. But, you know, and you can see right here, that ain't got a whole lot to work with. Yeah. So we are like kind of guides now here at White Tail yeah, Heaven. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. We've been setting else. stands. Ain't no doubt. Checking cameras. I mean, wide open. This man right here has definitely been working wide, wide open. open. Been here since a good bit before season came in. Yeah, he just helping out. Yeah, helping Tev us out. Helping out. So everybody says, oh, y'all ain't doing nothing for those deer. You're just showing up and killing them. Yeah, if I wish it was that easy, let me tell you, it'd be nice, but it ain't. Yeah, we we here. We helping. I mean, we're both tagged out, and we're still. Yeah, we're still here helping. Yeah, and we're getting ready for Ohio. We're putting other people on deer so they can tag out. Yeah. Yeah, we just hung uh, we just hung seven set, sets one day, and then I, I don't know how many sets we uh, hung. And one this morning for a daddy daughter. Yeah, yeah, they're going to try to kill uh tomorrow yeah we really need a marker so we can mark what yeah. these are but we're yeah, fresh we out right to, now we don't need to uh, mix these back straps up with mm -hmm. everything else because that right there look at that right there. Mm. yeah that's gonna be good and these kentucky deer taste a lot better than our alabama deer well they're a lot more tender too it yeah. depends on how much grain you know all right so he's doing this, and I'm vacuum sealing. He's doing the hard stuff, as usual. <laughs> and I'm working this thing. And I think, didn't they just go and buy this? Oh, uh, we're borrowing this one from... Oh, we borrowing it. The cook. Yeah. yeah the, lady, the lady that cooks, this is her, so we're just borrowing it. But yeah. Now, we're going to put this stuff in the freezer and uh, we're gonna eat it up here. Yeah, I'm gonna make these a little bit smaller, these bags, cause we've been having all this extra room. Yeah, we don't wanna be wasting. Make them a little bit smaller. How much your room you got in that kid? In this bag you just give me? A good bit. Let me put another piece in there, hold on. Okay. Yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna have to go get my steel. It's this thing right here, it's just not, it's not doing the trick. All this is is just, this is going to be Instapot stuff right here. But now, you got to think about it. The reason we're packaging it up so, much, so big is because... We're feeding you know, a lot of people here. Yeah, they, they might be, they could be upwards of 70 people right here at one time eating, so... Yeah, that's the big main lodge, or, or my gotta, main lodge, North groceries. Lodge. Yeah, we got to have some groceries for them to eat. Ain't no doubt. We need a little bit better. We need to be on the tailgate or something, though. This is, this is getting, uh... It's getting pretty bad right here, but hey. It's all right. It's real. It's what? Yeah. And you said you could grind all that other stuff in burger meat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah we need at the house we got all of our yeah. process and stuff. That stuff right there, though, in you, yeah, you, you can't chew it up. Yeah, you can't. I mean, that right there, I'm gonna chop. Break your tooth. Did I ever cut that? Nope. Shoop. This is not easy to do with one hand. And seal. These are already done. I really need a marker so I can label this one as back straps. I think he said these are the hams. Sealed up. And you take this, I'm probably gonna have to set it down here in a second, or the phone down, because like I said, can't hardly do it with one hand. Get this as flat as you can on the little sealy thingy, because it's gonna suck all the air out of it. Yep, yep, yep. Are these ready right here? Yep. Cool. You know, this stuff right here, these vacuum sealers, I've got some of this right here that's three years old that I found in the bottom of the freezer. And uh, guess what? Still good. Still good. Yeah. That's the only way to do it right there. Now it's sealing, now it's done because those lights went out. We got a different brand at home. We got the industrial. Yeah, we got the in industrial. How's the size of that last one? It's good. This is a tenderloin or back strap, so you gotta, you can't tell. Uh, but yet we need to keep these separated right here, like I'm saying, because we don't want to, we don't want to get them. Okay, well this is back strap too. So I'll put it over there with that one. Hands and back straps. Slice it open and uh, cream cheese and uh, makes my mouth water. Good, ain't it? Yeah, cream cheese and jalapeno peppers and then uh, wrap it in bacon and put it on the grill. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm. It is now. All right, here comes Hannah in action right here. Woo doing the hard like, stuff, I mean. Like she knows what's going on right here <laughs> with a little food saver. Yep. Well, it ain't as super duty as ours, but it works. Yeah, but it works. It's working yeah. good. Look at this right here, though. Look at the geese. Yeah, they've been playing cornhole out there. Yeah. We hadn't because I don't know how to play cornhole. We've got right here in the backyard. There it is, right there. Ready to rock and roll. Beautiful. Mm. And you could go ahead and put the marinade in there with it if you wanted to. Oh, and and that's right. all that's going to do is just help push it through uh, through the meat even more. You know, when you put that vacuum on it. We're gonna have to wash off there. Yeah, we're gonna rinse it off. They're going? Yeah. All right, good. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll work this time, folks. We're having technical, technical difficulty, difficulty with Hannah's phone. And uh, what are you doing? I'm going ahead and putting this in there. Okay. 
Right. All this is right here, y'all, is just is we bone the deer out. So it's going to be a lot of it's going to be roast. We're going to cook it in the either cook it in the crock pot or cook it in the uh, instant pot or something like that. Uh, we're, we don't have a cuber, you know, to tenderize it. And we don't have a grinder. So what we're just going to do is just, you know, freestyle right now and cut it into chunks that are manageable. And then we can. So what we're doing here is we're. We're putting this stuff up in, in bigger chunks because uh, we can put them in a crock pot or we can put them in the Instant Pot. And like I said, we might be doing it for 20 or 30 people at the yeah. time right here. And uh, What's sad is it's hard to remember what we've said and what we ain't because my phone keeps acting dumb. Right. Well, well if my it's... next investment needs to be a computer with enough storage that I can back my phone up and then another phone. But let me tell you what I'm more interested in than this deer meat. And I love deer, don't get me wrong, but I have been wanting to try one of these right here. <laughs> dun 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 Look at that right there. Uh-oh. That's what I'm wanting to try. Right here in the backyard, folks, we're just waiting on season, I guess. I don't even know if they got a season right here in Ohio, but... Uh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? I wonder what you do with goose. Jerky? I don't know. I bet we could make some brown gravy with that right there. And... Oh, yeah. You can make brown gravy out of anything that tastes good. Mm, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Now let me get my hand in to work because you're getting caught up and we can't have that. Mm. Yep, good stuff right there. It's good stuff. Mm. That right there ought to feed two or three folks anyway. Ought to. Here we go. Still rolling. Thank God. Thank you. Technical difficulties and all. Done. Done, dude. How much meat you think that is? Um, well, they're big bags, so. Big bags. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably. It's big bags. Yeah, got all the back straps over here and everything else over here. Oh yeah, had some good music playing. I'm not that way anymore. Got her did. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Just wanted to throw out a little PSA here at the end of the video. If y'all are ever hunting out of state, make sure to check with the laws on transporting your deer across state lines. There's lots in place to try to prevent the spreading of CWD. You've got to actually skin your animal and bone it out before crossing state lines. As y'all saw, that's why all of our meat was already boned out and the heads and capes and all were actually left in Kentucky at the main camp where my deer was taken and dad's deer was taken nearby. Appreciate y'all.